Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with our Friday, our special Friday show. It's our college football show on today in sports betting. As always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Scott Reichel. Scott and I are battling it out with our best three picks over the first two weeks. I can uh, tell you how we've done. Tied right now. Which is yeah, we went one and two and two and one. And so we are absolutely tied. Uh, quick recap of last week's pick. Uh, I uh, I bought in on the hype on the Raging Cajuns. They had a letdown after the Iowa after the Iowa State game. Could not cover against Georgia State. We're lucky to win that one in overtime, by the way. Also at SMU minus fourteen. Uh, that was an easy win. And we also had the Miami Hurricanes plus two oh two and a half. That was an easy win as well as they won that game outright. Meanwhile, uh, Scott he had uh, UCF. They took care of business in a big way. He also had North Texas. He he faded me on that SMU pick. That did not. They scored 35 points. They still lost by 30. So, yeah. you know what happens. Did not go well. By the way, I had the over in that game as a premium play. So, that That's was cool. a couple of rocking chairs for me. And uh, he, ekes out a, uh, he ekes out a half-point victory in the Cincinnati game. As they It was win. all skill. The line closed at 38 and a half. I got it at 34 and a half. They won by 35. There you go. It's all skill, everybody. So we both go two and one to pull our records to three and three on the season. Scott, you're away. What do you got for the first game? So my first play in no particular order, uh, I'm going to be going with Miami minus 11, uh, which is available at minus 110 on Fox bet against Florida state. Uh, Miami, uh, first of all, this one's most available at 11 and a half, but Fox bet still has 11. Uh, Florida state looked like a disaster team uh, in the first week of the season as they ended up, blowing a pretty hefty lead uh, against at, well, at home uh, to a conference rival, which is never a good sign to do, especially with a head coaching debut for Norvell. But Florida State ended up blowing that game. They're a very underwhelming team. Miami showcased how good they are offensively with De'Ara King at quarterback, who has looked extremely dynamic, which is exactly what Miami needed from the quarterback position. Uh, Georgia Tech came back and won. Uh, now Florida State's without their head coach as their head coach, Mike Norville, has COVID. So they're going to have to potentially win their first game of the season against a ranked opponent on the road, in-state rival, and their head coach won't be there. So that's not exactly a great spot for Florida State. Uh, I think Miami's got too much speed. I think Blackman is an abysmal quarterback, and Florida State's used them for about three years. I think he yeah. stinks. And I think Miami should win this game by at least two touchdowns. So uh, my first play is going to be Miami minus 11 at minus 110 on Fox bet. Donate that pick. Um, Scott, I'm going to take a bold – I'm going to take a bold stab you here. Said right. You said you like that pick or no? I do like that pick, yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like De'Ara King. I hate Blackman. Um, it's I, there's a lot, lot not to like about I don't, I don't know how much of an impact Norvell not being there is going to matter, but when you end up recruiting some people and you teach him a system and then he's not there and you have to throw in some other guy to do the job, no, that's not a great spot. And yeah, you're you still got your play callers inside, you got your OC yeah, and you know that Miami's going to do whatever they can to embarrass the rival here, they're not going to take it easy on him. No, oh god, so, no, yeah, so that's I, I like that as well. All right, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a stab from the East Carolina US UCF game. I'm going to play East Carolina plus 27, Scott. You know, don't, don't get me wrong here. I, I, I love the Knights quite a bit. They've got a great offense. Uh, I don't love that. I don't love that defense. They gave up 227 yards last week on the ground. You're telling me uh, you don't like the defense when the total's at 77 for this game? <laughs> and, and I know it's a shocker, right? Yeah. Uh, Pirates return a bunch of guys, and they return eight guys on offense. They return their quarterback, their top running back, their three top receivers. Uh, their defense is dreadful, by the way. But uh, UCF has a bad habit of taking their foot off the gas. It's not a bad habit, it's, it's, but it's a, it's a bad habit if you want, want them to cover. Uh, they will take their foot off the gas if they get the big lead. Uh, UCF, not a great team against the spread. It's three and seven. Their last 10 is a favorite. Two and six, their last eight conference games. Scott, give me the Pirates. Raise the Jolly Roger there over there in uh, – uh, I can't remember where, what town that's in, but uh, it's uh, – yeah, give me give me give me East Carolina plus twenty seven. Man, that was gonna flow so that was a well. Hell of a finishing statement right there. I know, right? Um, I, and I've even I've, I've even been to a game there. I was I was had an off day and I was I took in a game. I can't remember what city it's in. Um, well, while you work on that, uh, yeah, uh, I think that UCF has a chance to score fifty. But at the end of the day, uh, they they're gonna pull everybody probably at some point in the third quarter. So you have a decent amount of uh, backdoor coverage area, which yep. I think is. 
you know, a solid opportunity there for a plus price, especially uh, for Eastern Carolina, East Carolina, which don't wrong, isn't very good, but I'll tell you one thing they're used to it's garbage time. So uh, they might be able to uh, work something out and lose respect. I'd say uh, respectably by about 24 cover the number. Uh, But yeah. Uh, So my second play is going to be on a total. Uh, it's going to be on a Big 12 matchup, and it's going to be between Oklahoma. Greenville, North Carolina, by the way, Scott. Uh, close enough. Okay, cool. All you right. said uh, nothing. You said uh, the town, which is close enough to uh, uh, North Car- uh, Carolina. Yeah, uh, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah, so my second play is going to be on a matchup between Oklahoma and Kansas State, and I'm going with the total, and the play is going to be on the over 60.5, which is available at minus 110 on FanDuel. Oklahoma won 42 to nothing against Missouri State. Uh, obviously, they took their foot off the gas. They had pretty much 35 points in roughly the first quarter. So they really just didn't care about, about uh, anything after that. It was 48 nothing actually. Rattler was nuts. Uh, Oklahoma, just to pull up the actual numbers, were up 31 nothing after a quarter. Uh, Rattler went 14 of 17 for 290 passing yards and four touchdowns. So Oklahoma is probably going to score 50 in this game, especially against a conference rival. Meanwhile, uh, the defense for Oklahoma is usually pretty underwhelming. I know this year could be good. We haven't seen them play yet. Kansas State already played one game. They got absolutely torched by Arkansas State, lost that game as they ended up losing by the score of 35-31. If they gave up 35 to Arkansas State, Oklahoma could drop 50. And Kansas State scoring 31, I know that Arkansas State isn't exactly – a good defensive team at all, but I do think that Oklahoma could win this game even 49 to 14. I just think 60 and a half is too low. Oklahoma might score 50. Uh, I've, I've seen money come in on the over already, so I'm going to take it now before it climbs up even higher. I think this game should get into the mid-60s. So for the second play for me, it's going to be on Oklahoma, Kansas State, over 60 and a half, which is available on FanDuel at minus 110. All right. Uh, my second game is going to be from the FIU Liberty game, and I'm looking at under 60. I, I think this I think this total is too high. Uh, this is a, a Liberty team. They love to run the ball. What's that? They love to run the ball. They don't throw the ball. They, yeah, they love to run the ball. Yeah, that's all they do. Oh, run the ball. I thought you said throw the ball. No, yeah. I said they love to run the ball. Yeah, they're uh, they're a team that's not going to throw the ball. They've got the Auburn transfer Malik Willis over there at quarterback. Uh, not a passing guy at all, but he did run for 168 yards and three TDs. Uh, last time out, Joshua Mack threw in 100. Uh, Flames ran for 354 yards. They held the ball for 35 minutes in a game. They were actually uh, the underdogs. They ended up winning that game. Uh, FIU, solid defense. Uh, they should be able to, I think, slow down the Flames a little bit. I think it's going to be a long game for Liberty if they can't run the ball because passing the ball, like I said, is just not an option. FIU, uh, you know, Scott, we always say if you've got two guys at quarterback, you don't have any. Well, FIU has one more. They've got three guys listed on the depth chart uh, at a quarterback they have or uh, on all. I think you could see two of them, three of them, um, and that's the thing. The uh, uh, the Flames struggled last week against, uh, you know, Western Kentucky's passing attack, but uh, if, they can't, uh, if they can't get any pressure on the quarterback, whoever that may be for FIU, uh, there could be some. There could be some chunks. Uh, they've got some experienced wide receivers, but I don't. At the end of the day, think it's going to be enough. I think Liberty's going to control the ball and control the tempo here. I think sixty is too high. Give me the FIU Liberty under sixty. Okay. Uh, my third play. I'm going to be taking an 0 two team, which is always a dangerous proposition. Uh, but it's going to be Duke as they end up taking on Virginia. And Duke is currently at five and a half. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting, though, because the line has started to drop. Uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, these other books have five. I even saw four and a half. Bet on line still is five and a half mm-hmm. at minus 113. Uh, so I'm going to take Duke at plus five and a half, minus 113 on bet on line. A couple reasons why. First of all, even though Duke has struggled so far this season, they actually hung tough with Notre Dame in week one. I actually thought they looked pretty good. I know against Boston College, they ended up losing – as favorites by 20, but if you actually look at the game itself, they had a missed field goal, two fumbles inside the five-yard line, two interceptions inside of Boston College's 30-yard line. A lot of just sloppy play, but Duke uh, actually only was outgained by about 30 yards, so the game was very close in terms of the stats. They just lost by 20 because of turnovers in the red zone. 
uh, or in plus territory. And Virginia, words cannot describe how important Bryce Perkins was to that offense last year. He did literally everything for Virginia, and now he's gone. And Virginia officially announced that their new quarterback is going to be Brennan Armstrong. And uh, if you look at Brennan Armstrong's stats, uh, they're pretty non-existent because he really hasn't played that much. And this will be Virginia's first game of the season. Uh, His 2019 stats, he had one touchdown, two interceptions. So, yeah, he's now laying five and a half against a team that's played twice already. I think that's too many points. I think Duke has a shot to win the game. So, for me, I'm going to go with Duke uh, plus the five and a half, which is available at minus 113 on bet online. All right. Well, we'll see how that goes. I haven't been impressed with Duke yet. Um, oh, you shouldn't be. I'm just mostly – I think they're giving Virginia too much credit. Even well, an unproven quarterback is your starting quarterback. I, you, I can't remember. You still have a pretty fair defense. So, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if the Dukies are able to uh, – Wait, who has a fair defense? Virginia does. They still lost Bryce Hall. He was the best corner. I understand. I understand. We'll see. Um, I, I just think it's too, I just think it's too many points. Well, I'll put it this way: I don't like that pick as much as I liked your second one. Uh, that's fair. My third pick is going to be from the Big Twelve. I'm going to play a total in that one. It's going to be K State Oklahoma. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got I've got over six cool. I've got over sixty and a half there. Uh, man, this is this is there's a lot of things in, in this one going on. You know, as a Wildcat fan, I wish this game was a little later in the season. I, I want to see this. Uh, I want to see this uh, Wildcat team get together a little bit more, but that's not the case. Uh, they had issues on both sides of the ball against a very, very bad Central Arkansas team, and uh, Central Arkansas was beat, able to beat them over the top. Just, I mean, Arkansas State. Uh, what's that? What is it? Central Arkansas. You said it's Arkansas State. Central Arkansas is a different college. No, you sure? I mean, I know, it's a, I know it's a different college. Wait, talk about Kansas State? It was the Red Wolves. You're right. You're yeah, right. I broke the game down five minutes ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. We I have know. the same pick. I know it was Arkansas State. Yeah, I know. Well, they still they still were torched. The, the, the Arkansas State, okay, a little better than Central Arkansas, but still shouldn't be able to compete with K-State. Certainly shouldn't be able to beat them. Shouldn't, and they certainly shouldn't be able to complete, beat five long touchdown passes. So uh, I think this is going to be a field day for – You think Oklahoma gets to 50? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is you. You got to remember, this is a revenge spot too for Oklahoma. Yeah. And uh, Oklahoma, they don't they don't forget those kind of things. They're going to be in front of their home fans. I do think Kansas State should score at least two touchdowns in this game as well. So yeah, Oklahoma Oklahoma's banged up on the on the front on the defensive front, yeah. and their defense is always light years behind their offense. Um, that's. It, uh, you know, Spencer, we didn't really learn much about Oklahoma against uh, Missouri State. I knew in the first quarter that rat or kid has talent. I'll tell we, you that. we learned Missouri State sucks. You know, thirty-one nothing in the first quarter. I understand. I'm not. I'm not sure. No, no, no. I'm just saying that their first team offense, even though of course they had no, they had no competition. Rat or can sling the ball. That that's a quarterback right there. Rat or he's really, really good. And I think. Yeah, he, they they talk about him being the, the the best arm ever at Oklahoma. He's really good. So, you know, we'll see. That's a lot of pressure to put on a kid after one game. But uh, this, is, this is a K-State squad that just eh, – they may not be good this year. They had, they had issues on both sides of the ball. Um, I'm just a uh, – I'm, I'm with you on the, on the over, Scott. I don't think, uh, I don't think the K-State defense can, can stop this passing attack for Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma is going to unleash it for four quarters, and I think 50 is absolutely a possibility. I think four is a stretch. I think for three quarters, but Oklahoma might have 50 by then anyway. I'm not even sure they pull off in the fourth quarter, buddy. I don't know either. We'll see. They were, I know they were, they were pissed about that game last year that it ended up hurting them. So, I'll play the uh, – you, you have 60 and a half also? Oh, uh, 60 and a half minus one time. Yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Where do you think this line closes? 64? 63? Yeah. There's no I way think, people are betting the under. I think this is going to do nothing but go up throughout yep. the uh, throughout the day today and early tomorrow. It's a it is a noon game. Um, so I think all your action is going to come here in a little while. But I would get down on this. Soon as rather as than later. Yes, absolutely. Don't don't wait for it to go down because that ain't gonna happen. Yep. Um and I'm just you know, I'm not uh, Scott Thompson is another quarterback I got to see before he got to K-State, and 
I'm eh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. We, uh, we, we played them. Uh, I got, I got to see him play five different times. They, they played my son's team. They played him every regular season and they played him in the playoffs as well. Is he, uh, he's, he, eh, he's okay. He's fine. He was a, he was much more of a running quarterback in he's high school. Little, I like the dual threat mobility. I think that does help. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's, he's definitely, a, but you know, compared to a, a real dual threat quarterback, he's oh, of course yeah. not. Yeah. He's below par. It's just, I think he's good enough to extend some drives with his legs, maybe get into hell, even field goal range or something. I think, I, I think, I think in K-State puts up 20 to 24 in this game. And I think that's going to be plenty to get this total. Over. I think if Kansas State gets to twenty, this game's reaching seventy plus. So I, I think you just need like around fourteen, and you're going to be good. They'll do that. They'll do that. No problem. No problem because they're going to have a lot of opportunities because Oklahoma scores fast. Correct. So yeah. So they're going to have a lot. They're going to have a lot of possessions. I'm expecting a lot of first play bombs from Rattler, and you'll see a, a scoring drive of thirty seconds, and it's like, all right, cool. Yeah. All done. Yep. Agreed. All right, bud. So you want to recap the three plays apiece once one more time? Yep, I absolutely will. Uh, my picks are I'm taking an underdog shot there on the East Carolina Pirates plus one plus twenty seven. Uh, the FIU uh, Liberty game we're going under there, and I'm playing the Kansas State Oklahoma Sooners over sixty and a half. Scott, what do you got? So my three picks once again, uh, no particular order. Uh, Miami minus eleven, I minus one ten on Fox bet. I got Oklahoma over 60 and a half, like uh, my partner in crime over there at minus 110 on FanDuel. And I also got Duke plus five and a half against Virginia at minus 113 on bet online. I like your first two plays. I'm not thrilled about your Duke play, but we'll see. Uh, Duke might not be that good, but I do think that playing two games compared to zero, considering the fact that it's Virginia's quarterback's first career start, Mm -hmm. I think is a very solid spot there for Duke. That's a good angle. That's Plus, Virginia good. has no fans in the stands. They have no fans attending their opening home game. Yeah, that's true. And Oklahoma, by the way, um, they're going to have about twenty grand down there. Yeah, they're going to they're going to have a, a, a lot of a lot of folks in the stands. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's our that's our college show for today. It's mostly a number thing. I think Virginia should be around three, three and a half. Okay. Five and a half, three months. Fair enough. Get a little get a little value there. We'll see what happens. And uh, good luck to you, Scott. Thank you. Good luck to you, uh, but I hope uh, less luck than with me. I'm joking. Now, good luck to your plays, and uh, hopefully no matter what happens this week, hopefully Oklahoma goes over. Yeah, hopefully Oklahoma and K-State goes over. Very good, my friend. All right, guys, that's it, and uh, don't forget to let us know what you're on. We'd love to see what you guys are playing for college football. Maybe give us some ideas for some late plays, whatever. Uh, As always, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. If you haven't done so already, what are you doing? All the cool kids are here. Come on, man. Uh, Get it together. And if you uh, have questions about some of these games, because a lot of these teams, uh, they're kind of thrown together at the last minute. Some of them, maybe maybe you're not familiar with Liberty or FIU. You know where you should head? You should head over to winnersandwiners.com because these guys are doing deep dives into every game. My handicappers over there, they eat, drink, and sleep college football. So, uh, yeah, make yourself uh, make yourself at home over there. Get some good information. It is the number one site for predictive sports analysis anywhere in the world, winnersandwiners.com. So, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winners, appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate you watching today. Good luck on all your plays. Hope every single ticket cash is back at the window. And we'll see you next time on Today in Sports Betting. Take care, everybody.